Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Sandy Serrano Sewell, the executive director of Centro de Niños. Centro de Niños is a 47 year old agency servicing the working poor of East Los Angeles. We provide child development, child care services, and educational um, subjects that we discuss in length to the greater community. Oftentimes we uh, take on subjects that are quite sensitive to the, our community and thoroughly investigate them and thoroughly address those issues which our community is particularly concerned about. When this COVID epidemic hit, we felt it was our responsibility to really give out as much information as we could to the greater community on it. The first, we, this is the second in a series of three um, virtual workshops that we're presenting. The first one was given on COVID itself, the uh, vaccines, the myths around the vaccines, the efficacy around the vaccines, and we got him along out with a lot of good information. And information that was also quite alarming. One of the alarming things that we were informed of is that eight out of every 10 deaths at Martin Luther King Hospital here in Los Angeles is of a Latino. So that was quite, quite alarming. Uh, today's workshop is going to be focused on teens and how COVID has affected their lives. Our partners in presenting all three virtual town halls are University of, Cal of Southern California and Univision 34. And their representatives and our moderators for today are Senator Martha Escuthia from USC and Cecilia Borgan from Univision. So ladies, I hand it over to you. Cecilia, you wanna start first? Thank you very much. For, you, go, you go ahead, Cecilia. You go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. We're really, really excited to share this Saturday morning with all of you. We hope that you leave here with a lot of information. My name is Cecilia. Like Sandy um, told you, I work with Univision. I am a reporter at Univision, and I have been there for 22 years. In May, it's going to be my 23rd year. I started there basically like an intern. And slowly, you know, from uh, basically being the assistant to the assistant to the assistant, I slowly um, climbed up the ladder to become a segment producer, then a producer, then finally a talent, which was um, my goal, you know, to be a reporter. And um, I started being an entertainment reporter. I did that for like 10 years. So I was able to interview all the famous people you can imagine. And then after that, I got a little bit bored of the chisme and the kind of entertainment that was being done. So I became a news reporter and I have been doing news for over 10 years now. I work in the morning news. So if you're not an early riser, you probably haven't seen me because I'm live from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m which means I wake up every day at 3 a.m. And then I do a story also for the noon news and sometimes for the 6 p.m. news. It's a really exciting career that I hope some of you consider journalism. And uh, I'm very excited to be here today. And Senator Marta. Thank you so much, Cecilia. My name is Marta Scutia. And um, I, am a, I am an attorney. And uh, a, while, a while ago, I decided to run for political office. I ran for the state assembly and for the state senate. And uh, I served in, in Sacramento for uh, 14 years. But once a lawyer, always a lawyer. I would always go back and forth between practicing law and political work, practicing law and political work. And I left the Senate in 2006 because of term limits. I was forced to retire. Otherwise, I would still be there. And so right now, I am uh, the vice president for government affairs, as well as special counsel for the University of Southern California. And when Sandy asked me to, uh, to be a co-moderator for this event uh, in dealing with teenagers, I was very, very uh, excited about it, you know, because at, at USC, you know, being a, a university, um, the issue of, of COVID 
and how it's impacting families. It's really, you know, something that we as a university are very interested in. You know, we do more things than just, you know, develop vaccines or do medical research, you know. We also want to see how the pandemic is, is impacting people because we are noticing, at least in our student body at USC, that there's a great increase in percentage of uh, mental health visits. Our, our college students are, are struggling with, uh, with having classes via Zoom. And I think they're also struggling because they're not feeling the, the full college experience. And by that, I mean, you know, when you're 18 and hopefully some of you will come here to USC, you come to a college campus and it's a way of, of discovering yourself uh, discovering your relationships with other students, but you also do football games, you do a lot of fun things. And um, that's what's been missing right now going for on, on a year now, we have not had all the fun things at USC. So I was very interested, and I am very interested in finding out from you, uh, students, how are you coping? You know, because even what we had to do at USC, we had to, we got a dog, a therapy dog, so that the therapy dog was always available to the students to, you know, walk around campus or to just, you know, go to the, the health services building and just spend some time with a therapy dog, a really, really cute, uh, uh, I think it's a Labradoodle that's just very famous at USC. So we, we at universities as administrators, we're trying to develop strategies to, to uh, best make the experience for students a, a positive one. And I'm telling you, you know, as students right now, just hang in there for a little bit longer. Just hang in there for a little bit longer. Be safe, you know, wear your mask, you know, get your vaccines when your time comes, but just hang in there for a little bit longer because I would say that by sometime in the late summer, early fall, hopefully things will get back to somewhat normal in the sense of having some part-time in-person classes but for sure, for sure, I really do think that by November or December of this year, things will, 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 will get back to normal. So just hang in there. I know it's hard, you know, a lot of us get impatient, um, but just hang in there. I'm, I'm telling you uh, the truth. It's, it's just a couple of more months and hopefully we will conquer this pandemic. But thank you so much. And I really look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> That's great. And a little bit about how the morning will go. Uh, as you know, we'll be here until 12. Uh, and we have five wonderful, wonderful teenage um, panelists that will be telling us first about a little bit about themselves. Then we will have some questions for them to discuss, uh, you know, the topic of how you're coping with COVID. And then we're going to open it to all of you for questions and answers. So you hope you can stay with us until the end so we can get your questions in. We have also a chat box. You're welcome to use it. If you don't want to verbally say a question, you can also include it in the chat box. Right, Marta? Of course. So we'll be looking at the chat box. You know, so we just want this to be as organic as possible. Feel comfortable in asking your questions, whether in person or via the chat. We're here to just have a conversation, you know, and trying to find some information. So whenever you're ready, Cecilia, shall we get this going? Oh, I just a correction. They can raise their hand. They can raise their hand for the question and not, not the chat box. You can raise your hand and then our Vishal, who is handling all, all of the questions, he will let us know and we'll get to you. Okay. So first, what do you think we start with the introductions? Jaden, why don't you start? Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jin Charles. I am 16 years old, and I am currently a sophomore enrolled at Cathedral High School located in Los Angeles, California. I am a very helpful person and will take any opportunity to help on my community or school. I did play basketball my freshman year, and I plan to do continue this year. COVID has affected my life in some positive and negative ways. As a 15-year-old teenager in, a fresh, in freshman year of high school, hearing that a virus was spreading around was a crazy thought. If I'm not mistaken, back in March, when my school announced that we would have a week off from school because of the virus, it felt amazing. Zoom eventually came around and a system was created for my school. But now going into my sophomore year, this process is a lot, emotion a lot more emotionally draining for me. Waking up every day to look at a computer screen from 8.30 to 1.30 takes a lot. Although virtual learning isn't a, a positive thing for me, I have been able to spend a lot more time bonding with my family and friends. But I also have found time 
to make sure I can have time to myself and alone um, helped me build my responsibilities and I probably would have failed to pick up in the physical instruction. Hopefully I will be able to go back to school for my junior year. Thank you, Jaden. That's incredible. You know that at first they told us it would be a week, no? And now we're almost at a year's uh, time. Thank you so much for that. Um, now we'll ask Samantha to introduce herself. Everybody, my name is Samantha. I'm 17 and I'm a senior at El Segundo High School. Um, I play lacrosse. I'm involved in the National Honor Society and I'm a part of the biomedical pathway at my school as I hope to work in the medical field one day when I'm older. Um, my hobbies include playing lacrosse, baking, hiking, shopping. Um, and I would say COVID-19 has affected my life the most, definitely like my schooling and my education. I mean, before COVID, like I would go to school for like six hours a day, you know, go home, do extracurriculars. But now it's like, I just sit at my desk at home and Zoom for four hours a day. And it's Zoom fatigue is real. I mean, it's exhausting. After I log off my last class, I just have to escape from electronics for a couple of hours, like, or I will go insane. Um, and I'm also, you know, being a senior this year, the college application process, you know, via like Zoom and like emails with counselors and teachers has also been quite the struggle, um, you know, determining whether or not college campuses are gonna be open for like in-person classes this fall um, has posed a lot of like questions and challenges for me personally of like, well, do I stay in state for college or do I go out of state? And um, yeah, it's just been a really crazy process and um, I hope COVID's over soon so we can figure this all out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samantha, and congratulations on your senior year. I'm sure that you will be a great addition to any college you choose. And now we would like uh, Angelina to introduce herself. Uh, hi, I'm Angelina Mediva. Uh, I'm a sophomore at East College Prep. Um, I'm 15. Um, at school, I help start a club, LSU, Latinx Student Union, to help um, my com community get together. Um, I'm also in a, um, in a group, Latinas for Justice, which help immigrants um, get resource resources and know the rights if ICE were to ever come. Um, I love music. I like to paint and draw. Uh, I've been dancing for 10 years. Um, I played soccer before COVID happened and I'm kind of bummed out that I don't get to play again this year, but I will when everything get, gets back to normal. Um, as for how COVID has affected me, I think like Jaden said, there's like some positive and negative aspects to it. Um, I have anxiety and uh, it I've always had it, but since COVID, it's um, gotten worse and just being in this panel alone is like very scary because I haven't socialized in like a year. Um, but, and the anxiety, COVID alone is really scary. My brother got COVID and it hit him really bad and like it's real. And, um, but the positive aspect to it is like, I get to like just take a breather because I was so busy and I was going on and on and on. And like, I get to hang out with my family and see them. And I try to look on the bright side of things to like keep going. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. You, you're such an active teenager. That's amazing. And now we would like to hear from Ava Montgomery. Hi, everyone. My name is Ava, I'm 16, and I'm currently a junior at Walnut High School. I'm also co-president of our Black Student Union, a member of the Self Care Club, and I'm in the marching band and wind ensemble. I play marimba and several other percussion instruments. Um, I also enjoy mentoring elementary school and middle school band students. So my hobbies include painting, drawing, crafts, playing keyboard, listening to music, and walking my dogs. Pre-COVID, I, I enjoyed traveling with my family. I would say that COVID has definitely changed my life. You know, it's hard not being able to see family and friends and missing out on celebrations, not being able to be on the school campus and missing school events like games, pep rallies, and band practices. Um, but the hardest part is definitely learning through Zoom and completing hours of homework because staring at a school at a screen all day is not fun. 
um, but hoping things get better soon and my family staying healthy is really what keeps me going. Thank you, Ava. And now, uh, Max Rabody, please introduce yourself. Um, Rabaudi, sorry, it's a very confusing <laughs> last name. <laughs> um, well, hello, my name is Max Rabaudi. I'm a sophomore at Sequoia High School, located in Pasadena, California. I've attended Sequoia High School since second grade, so I've been there quite some time. I'm currently 16 years old, and I'm interested in programming, economics, artificial intelligence, and music. Pre-COVID-19, none of these topics interested me. Yet with more time to myself and exploring what brings me joy during these unprecedented times, I have found, I have found these interests. I, I as well play tennis and I can still play tennis now safely, yet I, do nearly, I nearly do not play as much. I'm a board member of the uh, STEM Institute. I'm in charge of PR and outreach. So, and, but COVID has been a very difficult time for me, but it has also helped me find myself. COVID has strengthened and weakened many relationships with that of my family and friends. With my family, it's been hard staying inside with them all when we do not have the same interests. Uh, but this has caused me to learn to adapt and broaden my perspective so I can widen my own interests and views of the world. It has not been an easy road for me. Along this way to this realization, I found myself struggling to relate to my parents and sometimes not getting along with them at all. <laughs> uh, on one hand, on the other hand, my relationship with my friends has uh, strengthened due to the fact that I primarily communicated them through video games pre-COVID and during COVID-19, I can still play video games with them very often. Um, I have found myself striving for more independence recently, yet it is hard to have much independence when we're in a global pandemic. I have found myself striving for academic independence to take control of my schoolwork and take control of my uh, time management. I have as well found myself exploring my personal interests more independently. I personally love mathematics and this is a topic my parents cannot help me with very much. So on that, on that topic, I take uh, much pride of working on it independently. Luckily, my school offers the ability for me to double up on math, and I found myself exploring my beliefs the way, and the way I think. Uh, math, is, math has shaped the way I view the world recently and has been a coping mechanism for me because most things can be expressed through waves, such as my emotions or COVID cases, and it's a concept that's helped me through these trying times. Uh, one thing that has been very difficult for me recently has been my time management. As much as I would love to watch YouTube and scroll through Instagram all day, boredom has struck me and I would like to do something with myself rather than watching YouTube. But boredom has been a gift and a curse during these times. Boredom leads to new ideas, concepts, and interests, but equally as a dark side. Boredom can lead to self-realization or reflection on anything about yourself, your actions, or thoughts. Having freedom and time to let this leads to great ideas, motivation, and a dark path towards degrading mental health. While both of these have taken place on me, I have realized how amazing it is that I've been alive. And the biggest coping mechanism that I found is a quote by Alexander McKenzie. It is, well, it won't last here forever, but while we're here, what a silly decision it would be to waste our time out in the cosmos, that brief period of time where matter woke up on a world as interesting as ours, with hair as excellent as yours, with all the other talking carbon units, walking, talking, walking carbon units around us, we could hang out, be fond of, and joke around with, and keep the abyss well at bay. Thank you. Wow, well, thank you, Max, and thank you, Ava, and Samantha, and Angelina, and Jaden, for, for your honesty, your honesty as to the issues that you're struggling with, uh, how COVID has really had an impact on all of our lives. Um, obviously, you know, as adults, it impacts us, but maybe because we are adults, we're kind of used to having, you know, developed, co developed coping strategies. You know, but many times with younger people, you know, all this might seem a very anxiety ridden time and also very scary. I mean, I have to admit, you know, I mean, I'm not very young. I'm at that age in which um, I'm afraid of even going outside. You know, I'm afraid of the, uh, of the variants to the virus. You know, I'm afraid that no matter how much I protect myself in terms of wearing double masks, that I'm still going to get, you know, COVID. And, I'm, and yet I'm not old enough to get the vaccine yet. You know, I think there's going to be some changes, you know, to you know, perhaps go younger and younger people. So I'm kind of one of those young seniors, you know, um, seniors like elderly, not like seniors in high school. <laughs> but um, so the, my first question to all of you, and I'll start off with Jaden. And then from Jaden, we'll go to Samantha, Angelina, Ava, and then Max. My first question to you is, in light of 
in light of COVID and how it has impacted you in terms of your schoolwork, your relationships at school, as well as even your relationships at home, in light of the impact of COVID, what coping strategies have you developed? How, how do you survive COVID? Um, sorry, right, for cutting you off. Um, I, I can't say that I have come up with a coping strategy yet, um, just because I feel like, I mean, in terms of schoolwork, I mean, I just had to, freshman year, I learned um, because one of my grades had dropped and it shouldn't have, but that made me realize that I needed to work on my like time management and making sure that I have my stuff because usually going to school physically, it would force me to do my homework. So I know that I can turn it in because it's as soon as you get in the class, you have to turn it in. But I feel like with Zoom and everything else, it give, gave me like a lot more opportunities to put it off and then do it in the morning or something like that. So that was one of the strategies that I, had to learn um, during COVID or Zoom. And I can't say that I have came up with any other coping strategies because other than that, it's been fine. But other than, I haven't found a way to help my um, Zoom fatigue yet. Thank you, Jaden. What about you, Samantha? What coping strategies have you developed? Yeah, so to deal with like all the stress and anxiety related to schoolwork, um, I love to like bake and cook. So I've realized I've, um, you know, had the time to make more like recipes and stuff. So I love doing that. Um, I'm also a coffee addict. So I've learned to make a bunch of different more coffee drinks over this pandemic. Um, also, I've tried to like meditate and like do yoga, which that helps sometimes, but I'm a very anxious person and I overthink a lot. So yeah, those are my coping. Thank you. And Angelina, what are your coping strategies? Um. I like to draw and paint and it's like very relaxing just to like because I, I feel like I'm a creative person so I just like put all I'm feeling in towards that and like it calms me down um yeah I like to do that no I I, I understand Angelina because I'm also as a result of COVID I took up watercolors and I taught myself watercolor. So I understand you when you say that, that drawing or painting relaxes you. And Samantha, I did try to bake a cake, but I burned it. So I'm not, I'm not good at cooking or baking, you know? So Ava, how, what strategies have you developed for coping? Um, some coping strategies that I've developed are definitely yoga. I do a lot of yoga, a lot of dance videos that include exercise and walking my dogs through my neighborhood. Um, I think that's a really great way to get away from schoolwork and, you know, anxiety and stress because it really clears your mind. It really gives you a chance to think about something other than school and other than all the work you have to do. And I think that's what kind of keeps me going is having a break once in a while. Good, good. And Max, you know, what coping strategies have you developed? Um, personally, I found myself uh, walking my dog a lot or just going on walks by myself because it's just a good time to like after school specifically to calm down from the day. As well, I found myself listening to audiobooks on the walks because then I feel like I'm doing something with my time that isn't related to school, something I'm interested in. I chose this audiobook and I'm learning what I wanna be learning and not what I have to be learning in that moment. That's great. You know, I have a, um, a 21 year old son that lives with me he's a student at USC. So his coping strategy is the moment he's through with all his Zoom classes, which is everything from philosophy to logic, you know, to a history of Western art. He then goes to the garage and just starts playing the drums. And I think a lot of energy goes towards playing the drums, you know, so obviously, you know, finding that coping strategy is good. I need to find one besides my watercolors. What I'm also doing is after I finish my Zoom meetings, um, I get on, get on the treadmill, even if for at least 30 minutes, I'll get on the treadmill. And, and you're right, it does clear your mind. I don't like to go walk my dog because there's a lot of coyotes where I live. And my dog is very small and the coyotes right now are hunting down the small dogs. So, so I have to be careful as, uh, you know, in terms of going outside, but um, I'll send it back to you, Cecilia. Thank you, Senator. Uh, that's great. Um... I wanted to share a little bit about what 
I've been doing too, uh, like Samantha, I've been cooking more, not baking because I'm terrible at baking, but I've been cooking more for my family and also reading more. And I've, uh, through Zoom, I exercise every day at 3 p.m. And I choose, you know, I have either a trainer or I choose different free classes, which makes it fun to do a different workout every, every day. Since we're in the, in the subject of coping mechanisms, I also wanted to ask you guys if you've developed any negative coping mechanisms or have you had the temptation to, to fall into any negative, um, it could be you know eating more or smoking or vaping or possibly doing drugs. What are some of the things that you have been tempted to do that you think are not that positive and that you try, try to stay away from? Can we start with Jaden? Um, I can't say that I've had any negative coping strategies. Um, I forgot to mention that one of my coping strategies was taking pictures um, because I, I, I don't know, I just, it kind of like relaxes me, um, especially with the sky because almost the sky was almost beautiful every day of quarantine. So I've just been able to take pictures of the sky, but um, as far as negative coping strategies, I haven't uh, developed any or been tapped in by any. Okay, thank you, Jaden. Um, now let me ask uh, Samantha, have you been tempted to, to have any negative coping strategies that you're trying to, to conquer? <laughs> yeah, so like Jaden, I can't really say I've developed um, negative coping strategies. I mean, besides like probably becoming more anxious over this pandemic, um, that's all I really, um, that's like everything that's negative um, that's affected me. Um, or like overthinking, but I haven't really developed any really negative um, coping strategies. That's great. How, how has your experience been, Angelina? Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if it would be negative or not. I think it is, um, it seems, yeah. so it's very easy for me to like, just like kind of give up and want to give up, like on schoolwork and things like that. So I try to like, keep on going it's kind of, it's getting hard but I, I push myself mm -hmm. and you Ava thankfully no um I, I live with my family at home so I think I surround myself with good people who help me be the best I can be and I think they lead me down the right path so I haven't gotten into any of those things at all that's great how about you Max um I really haven't developed any very bad coping mechanisms aside from looking at my phone probably more than I should each day mm -hmm. that's something I'm, I'm still working on fixing um the reason I do it is because it's kind of an escape from the world but I don't think it's the best way uh but I guess there's nothing really negative I probably just explored things that were too dark for my mental health like everywhere at the end of time it is anything horrible but it's just a very dark thing that definitely degraded my mental health in a way I shouldn't have explored it mm -hmm. and sometimes I, I imagine that you have to put limits to the time that you spend with video games because now that we're in the pandemic I noticed that I have an 11 year old son and I noticed that if I don't stay on top of him he could play video games all weekend so we have to I had to figure out activities to do you know we bought bikes for all the family so we could go out bike riding and that has been a lot of fun but also just having conversations uh, with him because if not he can spend hours because that's his socialization you know the video games so so it's great that you all have um alternative coping mechanisms and that's what we would like to encourage from all the attendees the teenage attendees that are here too senator thank you so much cecilia well you know we're, we're dealing here with a panel of 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 students who are who range in ages from 16 to 18 some of them are getting ready to apply for college. Some of them will be there in the next, you know, one or two years. And so since I work at a university, that's the aspect that interests me the most. So I'm gonna ask you a question that's not actually in, in the list of questions that we drafted, you know, but I also want this discussion to be very organic, you know? Um, so let's, let's assume that next year you're going to be, you know, well, let's assume that next year, Everybody has their vaccination. We basically have herd immunity. Uh, we've gone somewhat back to normal. And so, well, actually, I don't want to say normal because I really don't believe that we're going to go back to normal. I, I tend to believe that this whole situation of pandemics is going to be, we're going to, we're going to see more of that in the future. 
So the question that I have for you, if I were uh, the, the, the Dean of Admissions at USC and you are interviewing with me or, 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 or it doesn't have to be USC, it could be any university, you're interviewing with a Dean of Admissions. And the question that I'm gonna ask you is, how did COVID, did COVID make you a better person? And if so, how? So let's, let's do reverse now, let's start with Max. Yes, uh, hello. Um, I, this is a very difficult question for me. Honestly, a very difficult one. I, I would like to hope it made me a better person, but I can't say because it's probably been canceled out by other like times where it's been more difficult for me. But where I am currently, I have a pretty good mental state and I've, I've came to terms with what has been difficult for me. Uh, just I've, I've realized what, what I find important and what's, what's important in the world to me my interest and that's really helped. And it's definitely helped me find the interest that I will like to pursue through throughout my life rather than just uh, temporary things, which is which is good for me because I, I had lots of confusion on that before. But I believe it is maybe a better person, although in, it, in some areas it has, in some areas it hasn't. I think academically it has, socially it has, but I guess physically it hasn't because I haven't been really keeping it in shape as much as I should have been. And I, I know, I know, I would hope to like, I would hope to do that more. And there's still time left for improvement. Well, Max, I really appreciate your honesty. You know, because I think all of us are going through difficult situations uh, in terms of how this has impacted us as persons. You know, I have to tell you that 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 for me, it impacted me tremendously. Uh, even to the point that my job got restructured. You know, um, so I had I internalized a lot of negative things. But thank God I found the watercolors as an as an outlet, and so I I, I got I, I got better at at finding an outlet at doing using it as a coping strategy, but more importantly at, at at really learning gratefulness. You know the fact that I need to be grateful for what I have right now, which is my health. My 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 sons are healthy. As far as I'm concerned, that's all that matters in the world. So I appreciate your honesty, Max. Thank you. What about you, Ava? Uh, if I were a college admission officer and I'm asking you, how did COVID impact you? Did it make you a better person or, or, or a worse person? And, and, and just, just talk about that, please. Um, you know, sitting through quarantine, you, 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 think, you tend to think about yourself a lot. You tend to think who you are, who you wanna become. Um, I think I became more aware of what's going on around me, you know, watching the news, seeing what's going on with politics, with the BLM movement and gaining kind of a self-awareness of what's going on around me and gaining, like you were saying um, before, appreciation for where I'm at and how my family's healthy and how my friends are doing well, even though I can't see them. So I think I've, I've changed in terms of being more self-aware, caring about what's going on around me more. And yeah. Thank you, Ava. And, you know, I'm glad that you learned that lesson early in your life, you know, to be self-aware and to realize that you're one person of this huge, huge world, but you know what, even as one person in a world of billions, you can still make a difference, you know? And uh, I'm just glad that you learned that lesson at the very young age. I wish I would have, you know, I would have spared myself a lot of um, struggles. Angelina. How, how, if I am your college admissions officer and you're interviewing for admissions in my university, my question to you is how did, and, and by the way, I'm serious to uh, the students, that's going to be a question that's going to be asked of you for college admissions, as well as say in about five years or 10 years, and you're looking for the job, your dream job, an employer is going to ask you, how did you cope? How did you cope during COVID? Did it make you a better person? Did you kind of, you know, get off the rails? You know, people are interested in, in, in trying to tease out, trying to get the learning experience of this pandemic and how you applied it in your life and how it has made you a better person. So Angelina, that's the question. Um, definitely. I really think that, um, this pandemic has taught me like my mentality towards the world has changed before and after and I think since I'm 15 and I'm at the age where I'm growing and I'm getting to like 
adulthood and I'm finding myself during the pandemic, I get to like really reflect on myself and how I'll be towards people and be responsible and um, just like think about what I do for now on and like my actions and how it affects everyone as a whole because I'm not just one person, I'm a part of a community. Wow, you're learning responsibility at a very early age. I applaud you. That's, you know, I applaud all, all of you. The fact that you even have the courage to show up to reveal yourself in such a setting. Uh, it just shows to me growth, emotional growth. And, and that's going to serve you very well in life. So uh, I'm very proud of all of you. Thank you, Angelina. Samantha, you know, so I'm your college admissions officer. I know you're about, you're getting ready for college from what you said. So they're going to ask you this question. How um, how did COVID make you a better person or, or, or did it have a negative impact on you? Yeah, I would say COVID has made me a better person because I think with all the negative stuff that's COVID, COVID brought, I think it's also brought a lot of positive stuff. I think I definitely appreciate my teachers more than I did before. I appreciate, you know, um, gatherings with my friends and family more and I value them because now it's like we can't always see each other all the time. I value like traveling more because I used to like always travel the world, you know, throughout the year. And now it's like, I can't, you can't even like go anywhere. So I think I value like travel more and I value my friends and family and my teachers. And yeah, I think I've just gained, gained um, more of an appreciativeness towards everything. Um, and yeah, that's how I think it's turned me into a better person. You know, just hearing all this makes me feel good for the future that your generation is going to basically come into the world, come into leadership positions, already having been through the, the probably the worst pandemic ever and successfully navigated it. That, that to me is a great gift in a way that's a gift that the pandemic gave you and you young men and young women have navigated it successfully. For me, as a 63 year old woman, I feel very proud to know that for my older years, that you're going to be the leaders that I look up to. I'm really, I don't, I don't know, Cecilia, if you feel the same way, but this is very touching for me. So Jaden, you're the last one. So how has, uh, I'm your, I'm your community, I'm your college admissions officer. So how has, how has the um, pandemic made you a better person or did it, did it bring out the negativity in you? Um, it, I'm not going to lie in freshman year, it did bring out um, the negative me in terms of just um, phys physically um, for some classes like math that are um, usually better with physical instruction, um, it would be a little bit challenging for me because I usually, I would usually be able to um, understand um, what's going on in those type of classes like chemistry and math and most of my core classes for like English. Um, it was a little bit hard for me to get used to virtual learning because I feel like having a teacher in the classroom being able to help you at all times um, would benefit me a lot. But since um, COVID started, this is just for freshman year, um, it was a lot harder for me because I wasn't getting that help that I needed. And um, it was just harder for me to speak up for myself in Zoom but it I for sure learned and took that and made it better for my sophomore year so now um, I could be caught up in um, one of the top students in my class um, but other than that it's just like Ava said um, I have become a lot more socially aware and knowing more about like politics because um, before COVID I had I had no clue about like any type of politics but now um with COVID, it just gave me that, that wisdom that I needed to know or have. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy to think about me being able to vote in two years and just having that information um, available to me. Wow, this was a great, uh, a great question and answer. I hope you agree, Cecilia. You know what? I don't know what they call your generation. Are you, are you Generation Z? Is that, is that how you're known? You know, I'm going to say that maybe your generation are, are for resilience. Your generation resilience. Uh, I'm frankly very proud of all of you. Cecilia, 
I am very proud of all of you too. And I was thinking as you asked that question, uh, Marta, also what I have learned uh, in this process. And I think I have learned to build connections in more creative ways because, you know, I'm from Honduras and I go to Honduras every year, once a year to see my parents because all my family lives over there. I basically came here by myself as an immigrant. And um, this year I haven't been able to go. So it's gonna be two years. And what we do is we do a prayer group every weekday uh, at night um, to be able to connect. So we have a little social hour of how our day went. And then we do a prayer group or a spiritual, you know, something spiritual. And, and that has helped me connect. So that leads me to my next question. I'm curious to know how in a, in a, in a world where we can't socialize and I know how important it is for teenagers, um, their friends and the relationship also with their family, which sometimes can be a little difficult during our teenage years. How have you been able, first of all, to, to cope with your family? Because we are in close contact to them all the time now. And second, how have you strengthened, if you have strengthened your connection with your friends during COVID? And um, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll volunteer whoever wants to start now. Um, I'll go. Um, it has been, I mean, being a freshman, I mean, first year of high school, you're barely making new friends um, and you're just finding out your groups and who you want to hang out with. Um, so it has definitely been a crazy social experience for me because I am a very social person, but I feel like um, with school, I, I didn't really get any classes with the groups that I hung out with at school. So I kind of like broke off that relationship with them. Um, we still talk here and there, but I feel like our bond has definitely fallen. I found myself um, finding new groups outside of people, like people outside of my school. So I feel like um, it has definitely driven me to find or get myself out there more. And I feel like with um, technology being um, more and more advanced, I feel like socially it wasn't too hard to find new relationships or um do things socially but it is sometimes that that like physical uh altercate is it no i can't think of i can't think of the word but um seeing talking to people physically is like something that is really missed for me mm -hmm. and i do i have gone out with friends like one or two three times and I really enjoyed that um, experience. So it really helped me to um, keep social, keep me going socially. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and um, I think on my part, um, I'm not, I'm a very introverted person. So, you know, reaching out to people definitely can be a struggle for me. But thankfully we live in a time where we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of places, um, we have a lot of ways to reach out to people that aren't just like physically. So like Zoom, FaceTime, text messages, even social media like Instagram or Facebook has definitely helped with that. And I think with all of that, staying in touch isn't as much of a struggle. But yeah. That's- I could that's, jump that's, in here, sorry. I, just to add you. something on. Um, I believe that for me, the word strengthening isn't right. I think refining would be more correct of my friend group because honestly I've seen my friend group from who I hung out with shrink uh, but it's not because I pushed them away it's just we kind of drifted apart and then those now I have really close really close three friends and we're all very close to each other so we were fine to that small group that is very tight because in my opinion right now because we cannot personally have connections I guess in real life with people we have to be it's harder online it's easier to manage let's say three people rather than 10 a group of large friends so having a smaller group of really people you're really tight with is much easier, in my opinion, much better. And it came naturally because, like I said, it's, it's a lot harder to maintain social interaction over uh, technology, no, no matter how amazing it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I, sorry, I could go. Um, I think this uh, pandemic showed me like who's really going to be like in your life and the relationships you're going to have. Because 
um in the pandemic you need to like give effort to see people like your friends in school you didn't have to give effort because you saw them every day and you really didn't think about it and in this pandemic if you really want to keep those friends and you really want them in life you have to take effort to like text them or make a zoom call or call them and things like that and also make new friends so I have I still have two friends from middle school so and we've like kept that relationship and I know that it's going to be a long one and I made new friends I even found old friends from elementary school because of this pandemic that I didn't know knew knew or still remembered me so this pandemic really showed me like what relationships will stay and what relationships will go interesting yeah, and as far as I go, I mean, I'm a senior, so I already have like my friend group kind of set in stone. So for me, I just kind of um, FaceTime, call, text, um, social media is a big thing um, to connect with friends. Um, I've connected with old friends this pandemic. Um, you know, I have already friends in college, um, friends like and so high school, like as junior, sophomores and freshmen. Um, and also just like getting together, like socially distanced with masks when it's safe. Um, I love to do that to connect with friends. So I think having our generation be like revolved around technology and social media has helped a lot. Cause I think if we didn't have that, it would be really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think it's incredible to discover that, that you can make strong connections through FaceTime, through all these technological devices, you know, that enable, enable that. For me, I have really missed my friends from work because now we're not going to the station. I haven't been to the station almost in a year. They gave us company vehicles and we go straight to the story because I'm a reporter. So I just meet my cameraman and I haven't been able to see anyone from, from the station. So I keep in touch with them. On Fridays, sometimes we do social hour and we do a social hour in through Zoom. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, to keep all that because we need our friends and we need people to, especially to vent with. You know, so I'm glad that you have all found ways to to refine those friendships, like Max said. Senator, I, I I'm telling you, every the more I, I I hear this generation, the more I'm like in awe of you. I mean, you are just awesome. Um, but I also have to remember that you're 16, 17, maybe 18 years old. You're very young. You know, you're, I, I, this, no, this is mama bear coming out. <laughs> you're, still, you're still babies. You're still babies, you know, and you have been basically been put into the eye of the hurricane called coronavirus. And it, it probably has impacted your family in, in more ways than one. I'll be, let me just open up here. In, in March of last year, I lost my best friend to COVID at a time in which nobody knew how to handle this virus. And this man was a doctor in great shape and he died waiting for plasma. He died waiting for rendesivir, one of the big, big drugs. Obviously had he had COVID a year later, like, like today, he probably would have survived. So, so this thing in terms of the realness really impacted me very early on. And I think it also made me a very angry person um, because, you know, my friend did not have to die. And, and he lived in Orange County, where literally five blocks down from where he lived, people were, were, were protesting, saying that they don't want to wear masks. And my friend died because basically somebody did not wear a mask. So it, it, it makes you angry, you know? And so the, the and it also made me very scared. I, I'm a single mom. And I still have two young adult, young adult sons, you know, that, that I'm responsible for. So obviously I increased my life insurance, you know, should something happen to me, you know, so that if I die, you know, I'm taking care of my family. So the question that I have for you is, are you afraid that your family, if, 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 if any one of them, you know, if anyone in your family gets infected with COVID, are you afraid that that, they, that there will not be a way of surviving this, of coping with it? Are you afraid for your family? And if so, can you tell us how you're afraid? But more importantly, also realize that we are here as resources. You know, whether it's Cecilia, myself, you know, or even, or even Sandy, we know a lot of people. We know a lot of people in government that, that resources are out there for you, you know, to whether it's coping, 
you know, with this pandemic or, or even more importantly right now, trying to get access to this vaccination. So let's just be even more honest. Are you afraid that this is going to impact your family? Let's start with Angelina. Um, I'm very much afraid of um, COVID, especially because um, I've seen it like personally affect my family. As like I said, my brother, it hit him really hard, which I didn't think it was because he's 31, he's young. And um, him just being alone at the hospital, it made me worry some, like if he's gonna be okay. And like, it, it's real and like, it made me worried. And I also have um, family members that are, um, that I know probably wouldn't survive if they were to get it. And it really makes me angry how in California, we have like the highest number and no one's taking it seriously. And we see like people having parties and like not wearing masks and not taking it seriously. And I have like a sister and a tia like who are like afraid to like go outside because it will like affect them. It's life risking. So definitely I'm very afraid. Thank you, Angelina. What about you, Ava? Is this thing scaring you as to how it's going to impact your family? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's really a rising anxiety. And when we kind of look back at when this was like, not barely, like very barely first starting, like February, March, and you see all of the memes and like people making like jokes about it. And then like, how did that turn into this? Like, like, how did it rise so much? And uh, like you were saying earlier, it's really angering how people don't take it seriously or they you know like they're they'll completely blow it off when people are dying like there's half a million people americans who have died and the fact that they still don't see that is really infuriating and so yeah i'm definitely scared and i think that taking health as seriously as i can is the only way that i'm gonna help it thank you ava what about you samantha Where, what are your thoughts about you know the frightening aspect of this pandemic and the fact that it's out there, whether it's coronavirus or the variants, the new mutations. How yeah, I'm like absolutely terrified. I mean, with even the new variants, I think it's even um, more terrifying than it was before. And obviously like living in Los Angeles, like which like, seems to be the epicenter um, of this pandemic, it's definitely terrifying. And it's made me kind of scared to like hang out with friends, even if we like wear masks and socially distance. Um, yeah, and I think just like, you know, wearing masks and socially distancing and like staying inside when you can um, is the best way to like not get it. Um, so yeah, I've just been trying to do that, but it is absolutely terrible. Thank you. Max, any thoughts? Um, yeah, just agreeing with what the fellow panelists have said. It's, it's been a rising concern for me as well with the, new, uh, the rise of new variants. And I quite honestly, it's hard to even think about how I would be even begin to cope with uh, a family member dying of COVID-19. Yeah, and it does upset me very much that people are not being safe about it. And I just, I hear about, I watch, I, I'm on the news, I'm not on the news, but I watch the news every day with my dad in the morning. And it's just horrible to see everything that's happening related to COVID and just people not taking it seriously in any regard. Yeah, it, it is a very big rising stress, stress of mine. I, I, I cannot really think of how I would begin to cope with that. I, I know, I get you. And Jaden? Um, like everyone else has said, it is really frightening. Um, at one point, like 16 of my family members caught COVID, um, but we take it um, really seriously. We, they, they handle it really well. Um, and I think that it's, it's just like things that I, I think about, like how the world is going to change after all of this is either cleared up or has died down is there still going to be mask wearing or is there still going to be spraying down like handles when you're done or when you're touching it or consistently using hand sanitizers things that we didn't normally do when before the pandemic well i would hope you know that um at the very least the world will change in realizing that that um that we are are, are part of a, of a of a larger you know um ecosystem that that no man no woman is an island that we're all part of something together and frankly the only way we can get out of this pandemic is if we do 
everything together. You know, that we wear masks because we're trying to protect our fellow neighbor. Um, I'm hoping that, that that's a lesson uh, that we learn as, uh, as, as humans, as humans. And, and I tend to believe, frankly, that masks are here to stay. You know, uh, I think that pandemics are, and I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, working at a university, I have access to data on a daily basis. We track everything in, involving COVID on behalf of USC and, um, and talking to doctors and researchers. And I know that I think Samantha wants to get into biomed or biotech, you know, um, this, is, this is here to stay, whether it's coronavirus or any other, you know, virus, it is here to stay. The reasons, I don't know why. It could be environmental reasons. Um, I, I just don't know why. But I think that, that the, the, the quicker we, we adopt the idea that we have to change our behavior for the common good, I think that's ultimately a positive outcome for all, for all of this because we cannot, we have a lot of problems besides COVID. We have the problems of global warming, climate change, uh, refugees all over the world, people, you know, in, uh, with no access to water, no access to food, you know, whether it's in the Sudan, whether it's in India, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Central America, there's movement of people because people are desperate for a better life. And so ultimately we have to ask ourselves, what can we do? you know, uh, in terms of our behavior that can, that can be part of a, of, a, of a better communal solution because ultimately we are community. We're not individuals, we are community. So I'm really, really glad to, to hear that this pandemic has made you more aware. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I was your age, I was not that aware. I mean, yeah, in my time, we, we had Watergate. So obviously I was glued to the TV on Watergate, but I really did not become a, an active teenager. I was, believe it or not, I was very, very shy. So um, I'm just glad to hear that, that you're more aware because we need your awareness and your commitment uh, to find the solutions for tomorrow. Cecilia? Yes, um, Senator, I'm really sorry to hear about your friend uh, passing passing away and all your personal experiences, panelists, uh, regarding COVID. I, I, my, it brings me to my next question because I wanted to ask you, since you've become more self-aware as a luxury, the almost of the pandemic, that we've had more time to think, have you changed in any way the career path that you were thinking about? I don't know if some of you I know Samantha is, is thinking about something in, in the biology and the medical field, but has this time made you change somehow the career path that you were thinking about, whether it is because you're listening to more news, whether it is because you're more self-aware? I'm just curious to know, what are you thinking about college and, and, and possibilities for your future careers? Um, I think that since I've been watching the news and I've been watching everything, especially with the debate going on and like the, the new presidency, I've been basically glued to CNN. And I think that kind of changed my career path because as a junior, I'm thinking about it. And right now, I think, I think I'm definitely thinking about like political science and, you know, stuff like that since I, I've literally been like so interested in it. So I think that that's what I may. Um, consider doing with my life. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's great, Ava. That's, that's a wonderful career path. A, a future uh, senator, like um, a future president or a future president or a future journalist too. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Anyone else? I could, I could, um, actually in, during the pandemic, I've been like, um, trying to figure out which path I like gain two paths that I wanted to go. So one is our, um, like civil, civil rights has always been like a passion of mine. Like I wanna help change the world and my community. And I wanted to be um, a lawyer and um, help people. Um, but also like the mentality and the brain and how it works and seeing how people react through this pandemic was very interesting to me. And I think um, psychology is something I wanna 
look into because it's interesting seeing um, people's reactions or how they think mm -hmm. because of this whole thing of like the world stopping. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can even merge um, those two because there's so many things that you can do as a psychologist you know, to help the community. And also I would recommend that you look into different nonprofits. I know that you're already involved in the justice for, what did you think when you talked about, uh, you're involved in an organization, right? Uh, uh, Latinas for Justice. Latinas for Justice. Uh, I, have, I have been a board member for an organization called Carecen, which is the Central American Resource Center. We have over a hundred lawyers who help with immigration issues for the Latino community. And there is so much need. Um, there is so much need that I commend you for wanting to take that career path. Uh, because in my experience, because I work in journalism and I'm able to use, use it as a tool to give to people information and empower them through that, it is so rewarding to choose a career that gives something back to the community. And it's not only rewarding, I think in the present state that we are, it's necessary if we want a better world to live in. Thank you, Angelina. Angelina. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I guess I can speak on this. Um, so I've always knew I wanted to be in the medical field when I'm older. So having this pandemic, you know, take over the world, it's kind of made me like, oh, like, do I really want to be working on the front lines, like risking my life? Like, um, if there were to be another pandemic in like a, a couple of years where I, if I would be in the medical field. Um, but I think it's mostly just um, inspired me even more because I'm like, I can work on the front lines and like, you know, save lives in the middle of a pandemic, whereas like other jobs, you would just work from home and obviously you're helping other people. But I think it's more inspiring than it is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Samantha. Jaden or Max, have you thought about careers choices or, or, or not really? Um, I have. I, like Angelina said, I really have been looking into like psychology um, because as I, I like to help people and advocate for people who don't have a voice. So it's for sure, it was for sure an interest or like a thought in freshman year, but it has developed to more of like a, a focus for me. And um, I, I hope that I can one day become a therapist if I do decide to um, major in psychology. That's, that's great. The impact that a therapist has on, on someone's life is immeasurable. I remember um, a few years back, I went through a, I, I had a lot of anxiety because they had changed my schedule and I was waking up very early and I was having a hard time sleeping. And when you don't sleep enough, you know, your nerves get really tense. And I remember how much going to therapy for the first time helped me in that process to, you know, discover myself, discover ways to cope. So I commend you for, for thinking about that career path too. Max, did you want to add anything to this? Yeah. Um, I really can't give any like definite uh, answer of what I want to be, but something I've definitely thought about more recently is uh, I guess in technology and programming, because I see that as a pretty uh, significant key into, I guess, the, uh, to play a very important role in the future of, I guess, us as a race. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's what really I was interested in recently. No, and, and you're very employable in that field too, which is always something to think about, you know, because it's, it's so necessary. Our IT people in our station, engineers, um, the cameramen, all the people behind the scenes, you know, that are all the techies, are so, so fundamental to, to any, and, and now more than ever, we've realized that the technical stuff is so important, you know? So that's a great thing to think about too. Senator? Thank you, Cecilia. You know, um, just two little data, data points that I want to share. Uh, apparently, Dr. Fauci, the guy in charge of the, the Center for Disease Control, uh, he, is a rock star. And apparently the applications to medical schools have increased incredibly. And they call it the, the Dr. Fauci effect. Mm -hmm. Because apparently young people are watching Dr. Fauci and they're saying, I wanna be like him. I wanna be on the front lines and help out people. So applications for medical schools have gone sky high. Applications for law schools have also gone sky high because people are seeing 
how, you know, uh, vulnerable people, especially refugees or immigrants are being treated and how they are entitled to a defense. And so um, that also applications for law schools have gone sky high. The Black Lives Matter movement has increased an interest in criminal justice reform. Mm -hmm. So applications also for law school from the perspective of, of, of criminal lawyers has also gone sky high. So, so everything came together, you know, this last year, not only the pandemic, but also Black Lives Matter, um, immigration patterns all over the world, whether it's from Latin America to the US, whether it's from some parts of Europe to other parts of Europe, whether it's from Africa to Europe, you know, um, people dying in, in the middle of the ocean, you know, um, a lot of things came together in 2020. Um, people obviously are concentrating on the pandemic, but before that, there were already patterns of people moving, migrating, and, and that brings up issues of, of people. It, it makes some people afraid, you know, and obviously the people who are leaving their country, they're afraid too. I mean, people don't leave their country voluntarily. People leave their country because they can't survive and they have to look for a place to go to survive. Just like my grandfather left his country because he couldn't survive, you know, and I would do the same thing. If I couldn't survive, I would, I would leave my country and go where I could. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of problems, you know, already in the world before COVID and obviously COVID, you know, uh, made things even more difficult because it's difficult to solve these type of problems without seeing each other one-on-one, -on -one. you know? So, but what I've noticed here about all of you is that you're very aware and, and obviously COVID made you very aware. And you're at a moment in your time in which, you know, you're, you're going to be applying to colleges. And let me tell you something, uh, also another data point. Kids in college change their major two to three times, and it's about 60% of them do that. So don't feel, you know, forced to think that you have to come into college with a major already in mind. And it's, it's okay if you don't. It can be undeclared. It's also okay if you change your mind. You know, that's also pretty much okay. You're, you're very young and it's, and I think colleges are very flexible to understand that you don't have to make up your mind right now. But eventually I would say within four to six years, you should get a degree in something, you know? But um, so I just wanted to put that in you to, you know, that thought so that you don't feel the pressure that you have to come up with, an, with, with a major. But anyway, since you are a very, a generation is very aware let me just ask a, a, a perhaps a loaded question, you know? Um, government can do a lot of good things for people and government can do a lot of bad things for people. What do you feel? How do you feel about the government's response to COVID? Uh, let's start with you, Ava. Um, I think that when this all started, it was very sudden. Um, personally, I think the government uh, at the time of this could have been a done a better job. Although there were some who took it seriously and promoted masks, there were others who were careless and decided to let it go. And I really think that it's unbelievable how there's been half a million Americans who have died to this. And hopefully um, with the new administration that actually um, cares about science and we'll see, we'll, we'll see some real progress and hopefully everyone will get vaccinated and take it seriously. Thank you, Thank you Ava. Angelina? How do you think government has reacted to this? I feel like um, people, people affect people. So having a president who doesn't believe in science and is not taking COVID seriously affects how people as a whole are gonna take it. So if you see the president not wearing a mask or taking it seriously, there's like a lot of people who are don't, take, don't take it seriously. And he's supposed to be like a role model for America. And I feel like that's not what happened. And um, I feel like America, um, there's a really bad name on us right now because this was not just us, this was worldwide. And we, and there's some that are back to normal because the government took it seriously and we did it. And I think it had a big effect on us because we um they didn't take it seriously and they could have done a way better job and they didn't thank you angelina jaden 
Um, I don't really have anything to add on this topic other than what Ava said about um, the government not really doing a very good job as far as handling it. And I would feel like if something is global, you would take it more a lot more serious because it's, again, it's global. So I would think if it's everywhere, it would be a lot more of a priority rather than how it got kind of like pushed to the side and just... Um, can't I can't find the word, but I think you know what I'm where I was going. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah, I think when this pandemic started, the lack of leadership in the White House was really disturbing. I mean, like the administration, like didn't promote masks, they didn't promote socially distance. And, you know, the citizens of this country saw that and they were like, well, if you're not wearing a mask or socially distance, then why should I? And I think that really, you know, if we had, you know, promoted masks and socially distance from the beginning, like in the government, I think we could have avoided a lot of deaths in this country. And I just look at other countries who have done such a better job than we have. And I'm just like angry at our last administration for, you know, not doing a good job. But hopefully with this new administration, it'll be things will turn up and be better. Thank you, Max. Um, I really, I think all my fellow panelists have said it very well. I think Samantha said it well, there's really nothing I could add, but I, I definitely agree that I, I feel that the government could have had a, a, a greater influence for the better if they, if they use their power right, in, in a sense. Yeah, in political science terms, we call that the power of the bully pulpit. The White House is basically a bully pulpit. The person who sits at the White House, whether it's a man or a woman, has is basically the leader of the most uh, of the free world. And you're right, Samantha. You know, it all comes down to modeling behavior. You know, when 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 the most important role model in our country basically did not take this serious, thought that it was a hoax, thought that it was fake news, and you know, as a result of that, we lost about eight months, nine months time. Can you imagine in what a scientist could do in those eight or nine months? Can you imagine what the community could have done in those eight or nine months of wearing masks? We definitely, you know, we definitely would not be talking about almost 500,000 Americans dead. So um, I, I've always been a student of government. I've, I've worked in government for, for many, many years. And this to me has always been appalling. Just this situation was appalling. As I told you earlier, I lost my best friend, you know, and, and I still can't even talk about it, you know, um, without wanting to cry because I feel that government failed my friend. Um, um, so anyway, thank you all for your, for your uh, responses. Uh, Chris, uh, Cecilia, uh, I'm looking at the time. I think we have time for one more question. It's about 11.17 because at 11.30, we have to go and open it up to, to the rest of the the participants. So I think one more question. Yes, uh, talking about what what you were talking about about the 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 way that the past administration handled, you know, the pandemic and also just the attack on media that he perpetrated. I wanted to 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 just comment on uh, once when President Trump came to California. I covered it the first time that he came to California. It was in San Diego, and he looked at us and called us all fake news. Didn't open didn't open the, 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 the space for questions. He just basically insulted us. And I don't know if you've noticed when you're out and about, most news trucks now don't have the identifying papers, you know, saying KTLA, saying uh, NBC. And lately all the news uh, organizations have been wrapping their, their news vans just in plain paper because of the attacks to media from people because since our president did it, uh, people are much more vocal in insulting us when we're out in the street. So it has made everything worse. So in a way, I'm so glad that we have turned a page and, and that there's a new administration in power that is taking the pandemic seriously. And hopefully this will change the road that we're on, you know? Um, I From the questions that we had, there's one that we didn't discuss that I think it's very important. How has your experience been academically doing classes on Zoom? How do you feel your teachers have done? I know some of you have mentioned that you have gotten um, more admiration towards your teachers. What have been your individual experiences with classes being solely you know, on Zoom or if you're in some kind of hybrid and how are the teachers doing? How accessible 
are they to you? Um, my teachers, um, I feel like my teachers have done a good job. Um, sometime around like um, soft, beginning of this year, they, my school came up with this thing where it's like, it's called the community time. And it's basically a time where our day gets cut short, but from like one to three o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that is the student's time to talk to the teacher in case you need extra support or help or you want to talk about your grade. It used to be in-person instruction or you could choose to go if it was optional. But since COVID has gotten worse, they obviously shut it down. So it's only been on um, Zoom. But I feel like my teachers have done a good job just with lectures and making sure that we're still aware or not aware, but like paying attention to what they're actually saying and continue to just checking on us and make sure that we're fine or picking up the um, lesson that he's giving, he or she is giving. Thank you, Jaden. I, I could go. Um, I feel like my teachers have done the best they can because I have to remember it's, it's not just me who's going through this learning experience. It's also the teacher. And um, they make it, let us be very vocal on um, what they could do better and what should like be so um, implemented. So they make us um, take surveys like every two weeks of how their performance has been, which I really like because we're, oh. we have like a really good communication with each other and we have town hall every Friday. So they've tried to keep our community close and still talking and communicate. So yeah, I feel like they're doing a good job. That's great, I mean. Yeah, and um, as for my academic performance, it's definitely the same, but it definitely takes more works. And for my teachers, they were thrown into this pretty quickly, not knowing what to do. Um, the system changed completely. So I think um, given the circumstances that we're in, they've been doing their best, like absolutely. I, I, my appreciation goes out to them. I know I have a lot of friends who have parents who are teachers and they're telling me they're like, it's so hard like creating like new things to do. And that's when I kind of, um, you know, take a minute to appreciate the, my school. Um, we do like little like Google Forms where you like, where you send like a nice note to a teacher. So I always make sure to do that. That way they know that there's someone there for them. Like they don't always have to be there for me. Uh, students are there for them too. So I think that's really important. That's amazing. That's great that they are able to hear how much they are appreciated. My sister is a teacher and uh, she struggled so much because she's not very techie. So when it first happened, this is in Honduras, she was so stressed about it. And she says that it's double the work really for them to, to do things virtually now, you know, because the grading process, everything is different. The way that you turn in homework. So it has become very hard for them. I'm glad to hear your side. <laughs> For my school, um, we're all online currently. And so I have to applaud my teachers. Like they've done a really amazing job. And I think they've really like um, prioritized the students' mental health during this time. Um, you know, I think they've very like pushed back on the work we have to do and really just focus like, oh, like, how are you today? Like, how are you, how have you been? Um, like, are you struggling with anything? So I really like that they're doing that. And I also like, my school also does surveys of like how they're doing and so, that way we're able to get a better idea of like what the students need and what the teachers need. So, yeah. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, can, I, can I say something really quick? Mm -hmm. I definitely, I have a definitely a uh, newfound appreciation for my teachers because my dad is a teacher actually. And he tells me how difficult it is. And it's, it seems more difficult for it, him as the student because they have to talk and to give work, come up with the program and readjust an entire curriculum because they already had something planned out but they have to readjust it to make it online. And going back or just saying something about uh, like academic performance and work, I don't think that for me personally that there's more or less work, but I think the work that I do is more draining because it's all on a computer when I'm working on a computer every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can I can imagine that. I see it. I see it in my son. Although surprisingly, his grades have gone up since the pandemic um, started. I think it's because he's 11, so he just started sixth grade. He hasn't even met his friends because it's a new school, but he is focused, you know, on the computer, I guess, without any other distractions that much. 
at least, you know, we have the privilege in our house that he's an only child. So he doesn't have another kid, you know, uh, distracting him, I guess, during, during school, but he has done really well. And I commend the teachers for finding creative ways to keep them engaged because it must be so hard, especially with, um, with you guys who are teenagers and, and social activity is so important. So I'm, I'm glad that you're able to appreciate what your teachers are doing. Sander? You know, I really, I really am glad to hear uh, the students here, our, our panelists talk about how in your schools, you know, um, your teachers are asking for that, for the feedback on a weekly mm -hmm. basis. I, I'm actually going to take that back to USC, you know, uh, to, to see whether we can do that, you know, because I also teach at USC, but I'm a guest lecturer, which means I teach once in a while here and there. And I teach classes. I teach a class in environmental law. And I also teach a class in election law. And whereas before my lectures, which would be in person in years past, and I get to, you know, engage. I mean, I actually, I'm the type of a professor that I actually walk in between the desks, you know, and, and talk one-on-one -on -one to, to a student and actually try to do everything, what we call it, the Socratic method uh, for law school, which means you 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 pick and choose you know you know Samantha what do you think about this case you know or Ava what do you think about the dissenting opinion on this case you know um so that's how I I would do it when I was in person and you could tell from the reaction of the students whether they were engaged or not engaged we don't have that now via zoom it's very difficult you know to for me to teach my classes you know and um it's uh but you know I I like this idea of of the communication between student and teachers in terms of evaluation and accountability as to how we as teachers can we can do things better, you know? And, and as to one thing that Samantha, I think, mentioned, and that was that in a way, teachers had to change their, their focus, you know? So for example, I'm noticing um, in, 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 one, in my class on environmental law, it, instead of talking about the, uh, the legal cases that make up a decision or a policy outcome, I'm more interested in finding out from, from a real person's perspective, like, you know, how do you feel when you live in East LA in front of the freeways? How does that make you feel? And how do, is that related to environmentalism? You know, so I think as teachers, we have been forced to do away with the with the details of teaching in terms of making sure that they know about this case or they know about that case and rather instead making it more real life. How is this thing impacting you? How is living in a toxic hotspot in East LA, how is that related to environmentalism or to global warming? So I think that has been the challenge for teachers because for some of us, it's very easy to personalize it. For some teachers, it's not. You know, they, they want to hide behind the, the safety net of their book and, and, and develop the lesson plan according to the book. So, you know, all of this is basically a learning experience for both students as well as for teachers. But ultimately, as long as we agree that we got ahead in the same direction to one, you know, um, hopefully to, to one conclusion, and that is to become a better world, then I, no matter how you do it, as long as you get there, that's all that matters. You know, so um, I, we have reached time of 11.30, Cecilia, and I think I have, um, I think we have to tell the attendees to raise their hand in order to ask a question. And I know that we have quite a bit of participants, about 56. So our students here are rock stars. There's about 56 people in attendance. And um, so I guess we will open it open it up now for the attendees to raise their hand and, and to ask questions. Or, and if you don't wanna raise your hand, um, you can also write a question in the chat room. Uh, there's, so, been a, there's, if you go in the bottom, I, I'm sure that because most of you are, are teenagers and students, you know that there's a logo in the bottom of Zoom that says raise hand. So just touch that. And, uh, and then Vishal who is uh, in charge of, will let us know when we have a question. And um, while we get a question in, I just wanted to, to say thank you to all of, of you guys for opening up yourselves um, 
to us and to all the people who are here because we have drawn uh, so many good things from your experience of how you're coping, um, how it has been an awakening in some ways uh, as to what your passions are, how it has made you self-aware, how it has made you suffer also too through the sickness of loved ones. And uh, thank you, thank you all for, for doing that. And Cynthia Coronel put her hand up. Um, do you, did you have a question, Cynthia? If not, we'll go to Nenita Valladolid. Uh, either Cynthia or Nenita, Vishal. see Nenita. So Nenita, you have to um, unmute yourself. Oh, perfect. Hi. Being Hi. a college teacher before, I appreciate all the panelists of the student pan panelists who spoke. Yeah, they're all good. They're all creative. They're all supportive. And they're all good uh, future leaders of the country. Thank you very much. Okay, feel free to raise your hands if you have um, any questions. If you, we would love to answer your questions. If you have any questions also for either me or Senator Marte Scutia, you can also ask them here, okay? While, while we figure out um, if, if we have any questions, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how my life has changed since, since COVID. Um, now we do most of the interviews virtually. So what I've discovered is, you know, I did a special report on what the fashion industry is doing, for example, to the environment, because there's a lot of negative impact of the fashion industry in the environment, especially now with fast fashion that the collections change so fast and people discard their clothes so fast. And I'm able now to interview people who not necessarily live in Los Angeles, but I was able to interview someone from the, you know, from the environmental agency in, um, in Paris or, or someone out in New York. So it has opened up our possibilities a lot more of, instead of thinking in a box, you know, that we have to do with the questions in person, uh, we've been able to get experts from all over the country. So that has been positive. Also, you know, we have a microphone that expands so that we can keep that social distance. And, um, but sometimes I'm very scared because most of the time, you know, we, we are sent to locations where people, for example, are getting tested, you know, for, for COVID. And when they're getting tested, one in five are infected usually of the people who are getting tested because it's because they, they suspect that they have it. So it's sometimes scary that I've been able to keep myself uh, healthy, you know, by wearing my mask, by wearing my face shield, by really being conscious about washing my hands and cleaning myself. So I'm really happy that it hasn't affected me or my immediate family. Uh, my, my family here in Honduras, my brother did get COVID like, like uh, Angelina's brother did and Unfortunately, he's he's doing well, but I really worry, especially about my father, because he's 82 years old and he's very, very social. He used to be a social butterfly, so it's very hard because he lives by himself in Honduras because my parents are divorced. Um, it's very hard sometimes to keep him home, you know, and um, and I don't know if how you guys we didn't discuss this since no one is asking questions. How are you? How are you guys coping with your immediate family at home? Do do have have any of your parents lost their jobs because of COVID, or how has it been at home? Uh, I think I feel like it's been like very independent. Like after school, we we always like talk or have family time more. But during school, it's more of just independent, just get in your corner and do you. Because my mom is also a teacher, so she has to teach. So she's in her corner of the house. My sister, she's an, a freshman, so she's in her corner of the house, and I have my own corner. 
So I feel like now, like with, since we're all a lot older, me and my sister, it's more of an independent thing. So we don't really bother each other during school. Mm -hmm. So you must have very good internet, Jaden. If you have all those people, you know, in their yeah. corner, your internet must be really good. Yes. Um, I think personally, as for like my dad's job and my mom, um, I know that a lot of people are worried about that. And luckily, my dad has a secure job and my mom's a stay at home mom. So our main concern is really keeping everyone healthy. And I think as for coping with everyone in the house, it can definitely be a struggle, disagreements and, you know, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I think we're okay, you know, getting along because we do have a strong bond. And I think that's what's important to keep us going through the pandemic. Yeah. That's great. Um, me and my family actually started having dinner every Thursday. Anyone else want to add? <laughs> Do I go? You 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 have dinner every every Thursday. Okay, um, I started having dinner every Thursday with my family, which like gets me like looking forward to because I don't think we've really done that before. So I feel like my family's gotten closer because we do that. That's great. Anyone else? If not, we'll go um, to Cynthia, who has a question. Cynthia Coronel. There she is. Well, Cynthia, unmute yourself. Okay, there you go. Yes. Oh, no, I just want to comment that as a teacher, I'm also very cautious um, with my, because my school is like my other family. So I try not to go out that much on the weekends. And we have to be more responsible. So we're keeping everybody safe at home. I have eight at home. I, the whole family is eight and my family at school. So we all have to be cautious and wash our hands constantly, like you said. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for, for just for being a great teacher. I mean, teachers are truly the, the unsung heroes in this whole pandemic. I think we have Marion Nenio next. She's raised her hand. Marion, make sure to unmute yourself. Marion, what's your question? Uh, this is pertaining to the four young ones. Um, since since uh, some of the child, uh, some of the young adults, young adults in the classroom setting, let's say, uh, they're already struggling, uh, struggling on learning some uh, some particular things in school activities. Um, how 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 it changed them when they were in the classroom setting or during virtual, because it's, it's per subject uh, where time allotted. So uh, what other activities or uh, what they learned that uh, made them more understand those lessons that were given to them? Um, can, I, can I answer this one, at least just for me and then when you go? Personally, I find it easier to learn something I don't know because I've because of technology is one of the advantages. It's easier to reach out to teachers. And since we're all used to Zoom, I could just shoot them an email, ask to attend an office hour session so I can go more in depth on a topic and it's easier to understand just because of accessibility to the teachers on, online. Yeah, and um, I think for me, especially with, I have a music class. So at one point I had a huge marimba in my living room trying to learn how to play that. And I think that since it's on a computer, it's definitely, you, you have to use your visual learning. I'm a very physical learner. So I like to, you know, have hands-on activity and, you know, learning, learning an instrument over a screen is very, very difficult. But, you know, it's, I have a great coach. I have great instructors. And I think that's what's going to get me through. Okay, thank you for your answers.
any, I think we're waiting for um, maybe perhaps other people to ask questions, but um, well, Cecilia, what else can we say? I mean, how this, this COVID situation has truly been a, um, a, um, a, a life changer, obviously, you know, a life changer. Um, I know that for me, it, it really, you know, uh, let me just open up right now uh, as a way of honoring our students who opened up. Let me also open up. Um, uh, this uh, COVID situation, especially when my best friend died in March of last year, I, I was able to find my faith I was able again to even under such dark circumstances to find God again, you know, and to become a more uh, spiritual person in the sense that literally every night, literally every night I pray. And every morning I, I pray with gratefulness that I survived the night that I woke up alive. I mean, it's just weird, and, but then I'm also way older than you, you know, but you know, um, you know, the fact that we wake up alive is something that, that we should be, that I am grateful for. And I, and I praise God every morning for like, okay, thank you, Lord. One more day, one more day. Um, so for me, that has really, really uh, been the good thing about COVID is that it, it, it allowed me to, um, to really look into my spiritual nature and to really practice gratefulness and, and be very intentional about it as to how you practice gratefulness. Mm -hmm. I, I think another thing that it has made me discovered because uh, some of you said there, there were some blessings in COVID um, with, you know, with the bonds that you've created maybe with your family members or with some friends. For me also, I have taken up hiking and um, because we can be outside, if we wear a mask with a friend, I, if I wanna see a friend, I tell them, okay, let's meet at the hiking trail and we keep our distance and we wear our mask, but we discover different hiking trails. There's so many wonderful places here in Los Angeles and, and to be in communion with, um, with nature and to be in communion with friends in that safe space, you know, has been really wonderful. And also a uh, Senator like, like you, I have found also my faith, you know, through the prayer group that I do with my family every night, um, Monday through Friday. And also I have taken up meditation. So in the mornings when I wake up, I wake up 15 minutes before that I used to, instead of uh, waking up at 3 a.m., I wake up at 2.50 now. And I use those 10 minutes instead of looking at my phone the first thing in the morning, I try to meditate and center myself and think of my intention for that day, which is usually an intention of gratitude and just being thankful. And that has really helped me start the day in the right foot, you know? You know, I have to, I have to give kudos to my employer, the University of Southern California, because right around April of last year, when everything was, we were really in lockdown um, and everything was just getting bad. You know, the, the university started realizing that, oh my God, people are mentally not, 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 not quite capable of, of dealing with this. So the university basically told the workers, we were not forced to do it, but gladly we did do it, to talk to some of our deans in religious studies, some of our, and they were not just, you know, uh, in terms of Christianity, but we also spoke to uh, Muslims. Uh, we spoke to a uh, Hindu. Uh, I mean, the whole, that's one of the great things about the university. You can pick and choose your knowledge as to what you want to do. And I remember that for me, my, my greatest experience was talking to this Dean of, uh, of Hindu studies. And he also was an expert in yoga and in meditation. And he taught me how to do deep breathing exercises, you know, and how to like almost like expel the negative energy inside of you and breathe in very deeply, hold the breath for 10 seconds, and then expel the breath. Let me tell you, I do that religiously every night, and it helps me go to sleep. Whereas before I was having problems with insomnia, as long as I do my deep breathing exercises, it, it really centers me for the evening and I, I get ready for a good, you know, hopefully seven, eight hours of sleep. I, I still am an insomniac, but that's mostly more a reflection of me, of me being a, 
my job is very stressful. And so many times I think about my job as I'm going to sleep, you know, so I need to learn how to relax more. But um, um, if, if your schools give you the opportunity as students to take advantage of these um, self, of these meditation, uh, just meditation, learn how to do it, you know, because I had to learn how to do it. You know, I even had to control myself not to laugh about it. I'll be honest with you. I'm a joker. At times I think, oh, this is crazy. This is so funny. I laugh about it. I make fun of it. Then I realized, Lord, this is not, this is not a laughing matter. This is very serious and it's for my own good and it helps me. So um, I, you know, I'm grateful for my employer for, for having done that for all of us. But I think for you in, in schools, if you have the opportunity to do that, do it. You know, uh, meditation is something that I never appreciated until now, you know, so do it. So anyway, it's already 1145 from what I could tell. And we don't have any more questions. So uh, Cecilia, do you think we should wrap it up? And first of all, Cecilia, thank you. I think we did a great job as co-moderators here. You know? <laughs> Very, it was a pleasure to share the stage with you, Senator. Very and, natural. And, and, to, and to Ava and Angelina and Jaden and Samantha and Max. Wow. I mean, I'm telling you, the apple does not fall far from the trees. Your parents must be awesome because you are awesome individuals. And thank you for, for coming here and for talking about this because you made me you know, an old war horse of political wars of the 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, you, you make me have hope for the future. So I'm just so proud of you. And thank you for just being so honest. I really, really appreciate that. Cecilia? And I think, Senator, we can agree that uh, we are full of hope because of this wonderful generation, what they have taught us today. And uh, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. I wanna thank Centro de Niños for putting this together. Please know that you can count on us. Um, if, uh, if you have any questions or if you have stories to share with news, I would like to share my phone number uh, with all of you. If you can write it down or, or my email, um, it's Cecilia Bogran, uh, or you can follow me on Instagram too, at Cecilia Bogran and send me a DM there. But thank you, thank you Centro de Niños for putting this together. Uh, thank you so much Sandy for inviting us and thank you our wonderful panelists and all the people who attended. I hope you leave with something positive as I do today. My phone number is 310-420-0293 if you wanna write it down, that's my cell. And for those of you who are about ready to, to apply for college, please know that you can count on me. I'm a very good, I love to read college applications. I'm a very good editor of college personal statements. I'm very easy to find. Let me get down so you can see my last name. I'm es my, my email is escutia. E-S-C-U-T-I-A at usc.edu. You can always find me there at USC. Thank you everyone for joining. This will conclude our program, Sandy. Thank you. Sandy, uh, uh, mute yourself, Sandy. All right, goodbye. You did a great job. Thank you to all the panelists. These are really wonderful. And happy Valentine's, everyone. <laughs> happy Valentine's. And yes. hopefully you will all sign up for the next the next um, town hall, which will be about uh, very young children, social emotional development, and virtual learning, distance learning. So hopefully we'll see you at the end of the month. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Yeah, they were good. They were yeah, very they were good. good. They were very, very good.
What a great job, you guys. You guys were amazing. Loved your stories. Thank you. Javen, did I hear you correctly saying that 16 of your family members were affected by COVID? Yes, um, I, it was it was kind of like surprising because um, they were planning to go to um, Mexico because um, they're getting married.